Making the decision to personally take responsibility for you and your loved one's well-being and safety is no small task. In fact, it's fundamental to firearms ownership for those that do so for more than just having fun at the range and plinking. And since your weapon of choice is the only thing potentially standing between your family and those who seek to do them harm, deciding on an ideal home defense weapon and appropriate accessories can seem like an impossible task. A task made all the more difficult for those on a limited budget. Now thankfully, I've put together a guide to building the ideal home defense gun for those on a somewhat limited budget without skimping on performance. And since the 9mm Glock in all its variations is the most prolific self-defense and home defense firearm in the US, I'll be utilizing my personal Gen 3 Glock 17 as the host for this build. But before we delve into what components to buy and why, it's important first to set forth a few metrics to prevent this from becoming simply a list of things I like to put on my Glock. And to keep things simple and universally applicable, I'm going to set forth four cardinal standards for any accessory or upgrade you should apply to a home defense or self-defense weapon. In a nutshell, anything you put on the gun or replace in the gun cannot violate any of the four following standards. Reliability. Any accessory you tack onto the pistol cannot compromise its reliability in any way, shape, or form. It must be exactly as reliable in its OEM configuration as it is in its upgraded configuration. Durability. Nothing that you attach to this firearm should be objectively more fragile or prone to breaking than whatever is on there by the factory. Safety. Nothing you put on this gun should compromise its safety. Now, that might seem a little subjective, but by which I mean you don't want to put in a quarter pound trigger, uh, a binary trigger, or anything that would prevent the shooter from successfully engaging a target and not accidentally shooting a loved one or themselves. And finally, efficacy. Now this one's going to seem very subjective and the reason it's in there is to prevent people from arguing, well I'm going to put a 22 slide on top of my Glock and use that. Okay, before you blow the comments section up, no, I would not want to be shot with a 22 long rifle cartridge from any firearm. And no, that is not a metric for success. That does not mean it is an ideal home defense cartridge. It just means I don't like getting shot. All right, so with that out of the way, this is my guide to building the ultimate home defense Glock. All right, to start things off, we're going to go with the most important, possibly the most critical component of upgrading a handgun or a rifle to a home defense weapon or an appropriate one, ammunition. So we'll start off with Hornady's 135 grain plus P flex lock. Hornady's flex lock ammo is among my favorite rounds for self-defense because it's so damn consistent. Consistent in velocity and accuracy, and more importantly, consistent penetration, expansion, and weight retention. Meaning that if you do your job, your rounds will be just as effective every single time. In fact, these rounds were designed to meet the FBI requirements for defensive ammunition that can defeat automotive glass and still meet FBI tissue penetration and expansion requirements. How exactly? Well, Hornady accomplishes this with its little flex ball that fills the cavity of the flex lock round. This little polymer ball prevents the round from preemptively expanding by filling with foreign material. This also works against heavy fabric like thick denim jackets. So even if your would-be attacker is doubled up on Canadian tuxedos, you'll still be able to reach his vitals with proper shot placement. Number two, sights. My second recommendation is a set of OEM Glock Tritium Night Sights. These are among the most affordable Tritium sights on the market. The ones on this Glock 17 are actually off by 19X, which is currently wearing suppressor height sights. But more on that later. Now I chose these sights for two reasons. First, they are more durable than factory polymer sights. Their phosphorescent tritium makes obtaining a proper sight picture in low or possibly no light conditions still possible. Now ideally, I would suggest shooters only purchase an illuminated front sight post. Why? Well, because it should be the only thing a shooter's eye is focused on for accurate shooting. Plus, if shooters are on a tight budget, a single front sight is a little bit cheaper than the entire set. But either way, this makes a solid upgrade for any Glock, and one that can be purchased for around $50. All right, now that we've got solid defensive ammo and quality night sights, there's one main upgrade we're still missing, illumination. Now, seeing a target is critical to actually hitting it, right? And if a shooter wants to keep their support hand free, the light must be mounted on the gun itself. My favorite choice? The new Streamlight TLRA Flex. 
nearly identical to the original TLR8, the Flex version incorporates a pair of interchangeable switches that allow a shooter to configure the light to fit their hands and or shooting style. Other noteworthy features include a fully adjustable 640 nanometer red laser and a 500 lumen LED emitter. The latter of which runs for 90 continuous minutes on a single CR123 and the laser when used by itself lasts an entire 60 hours on that single 123 battery. Now, if this is a little too expensive for you, you can always purchase the TLR7A instead, which incorporates all of the above features except for the laser and retails for around $100 less. And if they still seem a little too expensive for you, shop around online. The street prices for both these lights is about 40% lower than MSRP. Now, obviously ammunition is critical to a home defense weapon. So it makes sense to have as much as possible in the gun at one time. I mean, the problem is, most extended magazines aren't very reliable, and the ones that do work are pretty damn expensive. So my budget solution is to buy a factory Glock 17, 17 round magazine, and install a Glock brand plus two base plate. These are very tried and true. I mean, so much they actually put them on the 19X, and accordingly, elevates the capacity of the magazine from 17 to 19 rounds. Now they also fit any double stack nine millimeter Glock. And if you're hesitant to buy a new magazine because they're around $20, you can get them for even cheaper at gun shops because the Glock 17 has been around forever. So examples are abundant. Now, one thing I would recommend is that shooters avoid first generation examples as they don't always drop free. Now, other than that, all of them are good to go. Oh, and lastly, as a bare minimum, I would suggest shooters have at least two magazines, preferably three, ideally five. Having this many magazines will greatly reduce downtime at the range when training and permit shooters to have almost 40, well up to 80 rounds of ammunition at the ready should an intruder kick their door down in the middle of the night. I mean, it's not that tough to shove an extra mag in your pocket, right? Now this last one's a little more subjective. While the ergonomics on the Glock aren't perfect, they are pretty usable, right? The only constant issue that shooters with smaller hands have, like myself, is reaching the controls without shifting your firing grip. Now there are dozens of aftermarket frames that alleviate this, but the simplest, most affordable solution I've come across is buying straight from Glock. That's why I always equip all of my Glocks with factory extended magazine and slide releases. Now both of these components are very inexpensive. I'm talking under $15 combined, and they can be installed with very simple tools. And if you don't like the idea of doing it yourself, simply join the GSSF, the Glock Shoot Sporting Foundation, and attend a major match and ask one of the on-site armorers to install them for you. The armorer will happily do so without charge while you wait. For me, this is the sort of upgrade that is a must have on every single gun because it costs almost nothing, it's just as reliable as the original, and it dramatically increases their ergonomic comfort for guys like me. Now, if you wanna see more information and more of the background as to why I chose the upgrades that I did, be sure to swing by ammoland.com and see the companion article that is vastly more in depth. Well, that about wraps up our upgrade guide for shooters on a tight budget. Be sure to tune in for part two hitting here very, very soon. And if you want more information on any of the products listed here, or just want to hear my complete musings on the subject matter, swing on over to ammoland.com. And that's right, this was a collaborative effort between Ammoland and Burst Review, and I put forth a very, very long article there. It's not too super long-winded, but it's infinitely more in-depth than this video could be, and you know, still be palatable to the majority of the viewers out there. Anyway, if you want to learn more, MOLand.com, and of course, stay tuned, part two is coming out any second now. Thanks guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more burst reviews.